Hello guys, good day. This is Anna of Reinforce Speak Love. Today we are going to talk about how to be a work buddy and a trusted guide in the nursing world. The subject will cover the best attributes of a mentor and traits of the finest work buddy. This is much applicable to those nurses who are newly hired. It could be local or hospital abroad. So when you're starting out your nursing job in a new hospital, the administration will give you a, a mentor. This could be your senior nurse, your manager, or your preceptor, who is an expert in the area. So this, I mean, your mentor is the best go-to person if you have any doubts, questions, or initial feelings about your new area. Your mentor is the one who's going to evaluate you in a certain period of time, whether you can work on your own, or you need an extension, or they won't hire you. They are the key to your success to get this 100% hired as a nurse, as a staff nurse in the area. Now, as a, a newbie nurse, a new staff nurse, you are much like of a, a wing person, a wing man or a wing woman. You are someone who assists, safeguards, and give suggestions to your mentor. It's important not to, not to be a yes person all the way because the, you know, the, the quality of your learning in the area reflects the quality of your questions that you bring into the table for your mentors to answer. But if you keep saying yes all the time, your mentor in some point will doubt her performance, it could be his performance, whether that person, your mentor, have done enough? Did he miss something? Did he need to add something? Is there anything else he can do for you as a mentee? You have to ask questions or even make suggestions. But you have to consider your mentor's idea, most importantly, because they you are just new. And some of them, might have egos, but in the most part, you have to build relationship with your mentors. Now, as a person, you know, as an, a wingman, you have to look after yourself. You have to stand for yourself. And one way to do that is to look for the top key qualities of a mentor in your area. Because in some point, once your your mentor will give you an, a feedback wherein you could finally work on your own, you still need more assistance, knowledge from, from other staff, or it could be from your original mentor. You are one, just one of the wingmen when you are new in the area. Keep helping, you know, that's the one of the value you can bring into the table so they can help you out too. And ask questions. Always ask questions. Observe them. How they do things. Now, speaking about the key qualities that you have to look for a mentor, the first one, the top quality, is that a mentor must be your role model. Because you're going to be a wing man, a wing person for this mentor for this senior nurse. So they have to be a role model for you. They have to be, they must be the leading example to inspire you as a mentee, uh, demonstrating professionalism, resilience, that no matter how hectic the situation is, they will always come up with the solution and get the job done. And in the most part, a mentor must have a commitment for continuous learning. Continuous learning that, you know, they can ask suggestions from the doctors and the doctors are asking suggestions from them. They could brainstorm. And continuous learning doesn't stop in your area. Your mentor must have other trainings during their off hours. Continuous education. And those educations, educations that your mentors have your mentor have, they will absolutely share it to you. So that's one of the greatest gifts, having 
a role model mentor in your area. As a role model, a mentor must be honest and have integrity, which is the second top quality. Integrity means a mentor must be walking his talk. His actions speak louder than his words. If he says that this is the right thing to do, then he will do it. He will show you how and why. Then you can ask more questions afterwards. Honesty means your mentor will give you candid feedbacks, even difficult ones. They can even give you extensions. Uh, for example, they, they're going to give you, you know, if your training is only two months, they can extend your training for another month. If that's what they think is good for you and for the company, then just take it, be it. That is kind of frustrating, but take it as it is. It will grow you. It will help you. That's part of an you know, honest to goodness, difficult decision for your mentor and for you. Another candid feedback, you know, speaking about candid feedback, when I, when I worked in Saudi Arabia, that's one of the prestigious hospitals in, in Riyadh, it was my first two months in that ward. And one of the best senior nurse told me that, hey, you are all over the place. You need to take note of the routine. And from that day on, you know, after my shift, before I slept, I write down what's, what the heck is happening for the entire day. And then I observed what's, what's the routine from Mondays to Fridays. And then what are the expectations and the routines on the weekends? What are the things to do on the nighttime at this particular hours from the start of my shift down to the end. Since the day I did that, life became easier. I know what to expect. I know what's, what's the next thing to do, and I'm well prepared. Thank you for that advice from that mentor of mine. That's honest to goodness uh, feedback. Now, another quality of a mentor is that person must have experience and expertise because their ex expertise allows them to offer you valuable insights, guidance, and advice based on real life, real world situations. Uh, for example, you are a newly graduate nurse. So just like I, you know, years ago. And then one of the serious, uh, senior nurse told me, you know, I was in a medical surgical area that, you know, she told me that code blue or cardiac arrest is not, is common. It's not unusual in that area. And she told me that whenever we have, we encounter this situation, you need to observe what we're going to do. So all help, start CPR, all the SOPs in code blue, because that is common. And then after that, she told me, she explained to me, this must be done first. And then this is the next thing, you know, other than the trainings I received, I, I have undergone before I applied. We already have the, the basic labs, life support and the ACLS before I applied to that hospital. But, you know, her showing me what has to be done before the, the, the actual cardiac arrest it will be will be happening because it eventually happened more than five times in my experience in that hospital. So yeah, it, that really helped me a lot to imagine firsthand before the situation, the real situation comes along what to do other than to, you know, rather than staying away from that situation, rather than just looking at them and be useless. So, so right there and then when the cardiac arrest happened, I was able to help them. Even, you know, a little health counts when you're a newbie. You know, it will, you know, your, your presence there, there will make sense to them if you're giving them value by means of, you know, applying what they, what your mentors have taught you. It could be little things because you're a newbie, but that means a lot to them. So it's important that they, ha they are experts in the area. And of course, 
The fourth one is a mentor must have an encouraging growth mindset. Encouraging growth mindset means that, you know, in the midst of your frustration to learn of your challenges and difficulties in learning the, the cases and the things to do in the area, because not all people are born equal. Some people really need time to absorb everything. A mentor must embrace that fact, understand, and, uh, you know, your mentor will help you embrace the process, even the difficult process, that in some point, it's going to happen anyway, not only in that hospital that you're, you're about to work, work for or work with, it's going to happen in other aspects in life that you have to undergo failures. Uh, you have to, you know, you have to embrace challenges in order for you to, to learn and uh, to improve your knowledge. Your mentor will help you understand the difficulties of learning and growing in that area as a nurse, you know, working on your nursing career path. And the fifth thing, the fifth top quality of a mentor must be a good listener. A mentor should possess a, a listening skills in which, you know, the, the mentee or the, new, the newbie nurse can able to verbalize her feelings, her thoughts, her questions without hesitation. You know, when, when a mentor is a good listener, it's, it's also one way to bring out the best of a newbie nurse or of a mentee bring out the best of that person by being just a good listener, ready to listen whatever a mentee's thought, a thoughts about the, the procedure, about the case, what are the questions, a good listener. Because, you know, when, when, a, when, when a student or a new nurse will ask questions, that's also part of their learning process. And their questions will also help you, you know, as a mentor, will help you grow and think and recall your knowledge, which is valuable, you know, to you as a mentor and to the mentee, to the new nurse. So being a good listener, you know, the, the mentor can able to understand the aspirations, the challenges and concerns of the new nurse, a newbie nurse. The sixth top quality of a mentor must be empathetic and understanding. A mentor must understand a mentee's or a new nurse's own perspectives and challenges. A mentor must understand that not all people are born equal. Not all of them are smart. Some people, some newbie nurses, takes time to execute what a mentor taught them to do. Some newbie nurses need re more repetitions, more exposure to really catch up the skills. And besides, once they've finally learned the skills that, you're, that the mentor is teaching them, things will get easier. They can, they can do it. Like now, next, when they finally catch up. It's just some people, you know, they need time, more exposure. And the seventh key quality of a mentor must be patient and supportive. So supportive mentor encourages a newbie nurse to persevere through setbacks and challenges. So in order for a newbie nurse to really, you know, to catch up, to see, to see if a mentor's effort is worthwhile, the mentor must be supportive, must be patient, patient enough to understand that some newbie nurses takes time to, to be hundred percent able to do the executions that they are they have they've been taught from a mentor. Now let me share you a story of uh, empathy, understanding, patience, and supportiveness from a team I work with when I was uh, when I was working locally in the Philippines. So I was assigned in the delivery room. So part of the delivery room is is theater. So. All the cases there most are mostly uh, C-section, gynecology, surgery, 
operations. So that's part of the delivery room. And the other part, other half of the delivery room is the, the NICU, the Neonatal Intensive Care Unit, which I love to work with. I want to be in the a NICU nurse. I don't love being a theater nurse, whatever kinds of theater, because I love drinking wa water. I love hydrating myself. Yes, I love, means I really do. And it's it's warm in the Philippines, so you also need to hydrate yourself from time to time. It's the, you know, regardless of the season, it's always hot. So I drink a lot of water. I want to eat lunch on time as much as possible, which doesn't happen almost every time I work. I want to have a uh, freedom. And I just don't like to be in theater. But my manager decide, decided for me to, to be in the theater at times because, you know, the nurses in the NICU and theater nurses must exchange roles from time to time to give them a break. So, yeah, I, I told my manager that I don't really want to be in the theater. But, yeah, they did insist that, yeah, I, I should give it a try. And you know what really happened is I'm I'm a I'm kind of a slow person if I don't like what I'm doing. And uh you know my colleagues were really patient. Amazingly patient, understanding, supportive in teaching me about the instruments. What's the thing that should be handed first from top to bottom? How to wash the instruments, how to uh keep them clean, how to fold the, the towels, how to assist the surgeon and everything. And they've done that for almost three months. They The, the staff there were always been beside me when I assist, when, when I am a scrub nurse. So they, they were always beside me, pointing out what's the next thing to be handed to the surgeon. And then next, and then the next day I forget it. And they're just they they always have my back until such time that I finally memorize the theater instruments. And I I can't believe how supportive they are, that they really want me there. They need me there. And, uh, you know, the routines in theater, I find it hard to really absorb everything there, especially every instrument. But the staff were always with me at my back. And the good thing is that I tell them, I actually am honest to goodness person. I, I told them, I don't know what's, I don't know what's next. I, I told my senior nurses, I don't know what's next. I forget about what's, what's going to be, what's the next instrument to be handed in this case. So, and they're always with me. There are no days that they're, they lack of support in theater. So, it actually went to the point that I have finally memorized all the instruments and I can assist the doctors right away, straight up, straight up. It's just that whatever problems and doubts I have, I can comfortably tell them and they're always there to help me. As a result of that, I became a theater nurse, even though I don't, that's not my cup of tea. <laughs> And that was a wonderful, one of the wonderful, most wonderful experience that I have as a nurse, because I've seen babies there popping up from the tummy of, of the mother, you know, from C-section, and I've seen a couple of complications. I've, I've learned a lot. So thank you very much from, for, you know, to those staff who, who helped me learn about the delivery uh, room, uh, NICU, and theater in that particular hospital. Thank you very much. A heartfelt happiness and gratitude to you. Kudos. So that's how it is. Not everybody uh, is born smart and fast and can, uh, can grasp ideas and instructions easily. Some people need time. And I'm one of them. The eighth top quality of a mentor is that he must possess an effective way of communication. So a mentor must be able to articulate ideas, provide constructive feedbacks, and offer words of encouragement to the mentees, to the newbie nurses, in a way that these nurses, the, you know, the, men the mentees can able to express their feelings, their doubts, their questions and idea comfortably to the mentor. 
And the next big thing that a mentor must possess is that he must introduce the mentees, the new staff, to the entire team, the entire network, you know, people who are actively, you know, involved in the area, the doctors, surgeons, best colleagues, nursing managers, nursing directors, everybody. A mentor must encourage the newbie nurses to join uh, networking events, which will be held by the hospital, including career advancement opportunities. So the mentors must be able to orient them about the continuing education, the CPD, and the upcoming trainings in, you know, pertaining to the, to the area that you're there that you're they're working on like for example if you know if you you are working in the palliative unit the mentor must give you some optional trainings you know which will be held in the following months weeks it could be you know continuing education education offered by the hospital it could be master's degree sponsored by the hospital a mentor must give you this idea to inspire the mentees and lastly a mentor must be goal oriented. Goal oriented in the way that, you know, usually this is how good the mentors are. From the start of the shift, and, you know, by the time that they received the patients, their patients, their assignments, they already have the plan ahead about what to do for the entire day, how they're going to prioritize the patients, what are the first things to be, to be done, and what are the last, you know, the least priority things that can be done in the afternoon? The mentor must be able to possess this. They have, uh, they have clear, achievable goals and plans which they can share to their mentees, so that, you know, you know, the newbie nurses will have uh, a, a perspectives about what's really going on in the area. And other than your own plan, they can also come up with their own plans by the time they, they're going to be on their own. And, you know, the mentors usually make plans of their day. And take note that not all plans when you're working as a nurse do come true. It's important to really be flexible, to revisit the plans that you've done for the entire day and refine them as the day goes along and share it to the mentees. And the mentees must be able to observe it. You know, just give and take between the mentees and the mentors. Give and take of ideas and goals to be accomplished at the end of the day. So what's the target? And of course, always take note of the progress and revise the plans, the strategies from time to time. In order to be the finest wing person, wing man, or wing woman to your mentor, you know, senior nurse, mentor nurse, it's important to be open-minded. Forget about subscribing to the fact that you are better than your mentor. It's impossible to build relationship in that kind of scenario, in that kind of thinking. Being open-minded means that uh, you ask questions to your mentor. Questions can help you build relationships. High quality questions. Questions are the only value that you can bring into the table for your mentors and you to share with, to interact with, to brainstorm with. And since you're asking questions, you can also help your mentor in some point check on their blind sight. There might be things that they forget and there might be things that they need to remember. And that will only happen that, you know, the only way you can bring it up is by asking questions. Well, although questions are good, make sure that you ask questions in the right time and in the right place. Sometimes, you know, there are circumstances, hectic circumstances, wherein there is no, you know, no time to answer questions, but just keep executing. Sometimes you need to set aside some questions in the right time. Or you can also ask questions to this, you know, other senior nurses 
But remember always to go back, get back to your original mentor. That's that's another that's way of respect. Another thing that you have to consider as the finest, best wingman, wing person, is that it's it's important to be agreeable, agreeable, be agreeable, and then supplement ideas if you have one. You can say yes, yes, that's right, and then you can come up with your, you bring out your suggestions. Yes, that's right. And what about this? How, you know, could this be possible? So be agreeable and then strike your supplemental ideas or suggestions, or it could be difficult questions. So be open-minded, be agreeable and trustworthy. Be honest with your feelings, your thoughts and your doubts to your mentors. And, you know, that is the only way for them to trust you. And besides, you are going to find it out if they trust you because they're going to give you some level of task. You know, when the task is difficult, it means they, they really trust you. They do. Or they, they can give you, they give you some things to do because they believe that, you know, they believe that you can do it. That's being trustworthy. Now, let me recap, you know, about being the, the top wing person. You have to be open-minded, agreeable and trustworthy. And the last one is respect. Respect your mentor, you know, from head to toe, their characters, their, their perspectives, their personalities, the way they do things, their thinking, always respect your mentor. No matter where place they came from, their nationalities, take them as they are, accept them as they are, and learn from them. You know, you can learn different things from different people anyway, as you go along. So respect. Overall, a successful mentorship relationship must be or is characterized by mutual respect, trust, and shared commitment to growth and development for a mentor and a mentee. So if you ever like this, co this content today, please share it to your family and friends. Click subscribe and as well as the notification button. You can follow me in Facebook, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Have a lovely day ahead. This is Anne of Reinforce Me Club. Thank you very much.